everybody, this is Brian. Welcome to the 25th Flutter tutorial. Um, in the last tutorial, Flutter 24, we showed a couple key concepts, but one thing that we really kind of drilled in on was how to change a widget in the body of a scaffold. Now, that's actually not the correct way to navigate around an application. It's just a very simple way of switching that widget out. So one thing I want to cover today is how to navigate through an application. Now, when I say navigate, what am I talking about? If you go to the Flutter website, and I have to apologize, I still have a cold, so if my voice cracks or I cough, it might get a little nasty, but uh, go to the Flutter website, routing and navigation, and read up on core concepts. You'll need to understand two main concepts, a route and a navigator. A route is exactly what it sounds like, a route going from point A to point B. You're going to go from your house to your friend's house. How are you getting there? Now let's say you want to go back from your friend's house back to your house. How are you getting there? That's really what a route does. Navigator actually takes those routes and makes them do things, makes your application move from point A to point B. And you can see kind of a simple example here. And we're going to build something as always. So we've got our little application up and it does absolutely nothing. It's magnificent, isn't it? So um, what we're going to do here is we are going to make a new material app. In that material app, we're just going to say the title. Whoops. I don't want to call it router. Let's call it navigation. Now, a couple things you should note right off the bat. We need to put our routes here, but our routes don't exist yet. So if you type routes, it's going to want to know some things. So we're going to say we need a comma instead of a period. That's why that's freaking out on us there. And in there is where we will put our routes. But as I said, they don't exist yet. We're getting to that point. Now we need our home. And for now, we're just going to say null. Let's build this out here. So first thing we want to do is create a new. And I like putting a directory. And I like saying screens. But you can kind of do this just really however you want. We're going to import the material.dart. All I know is I have had this cold for about a week. My girlfriend gave it to me, and I am so, so over this cold right now. It's just like it's one of those that started like in your nose and then started working its way down. I like didn't even have a voice yesterday. It was ridiculous. So if I sound horrible today, I mean, yesterday was just really bad. All right, so we've got our build method. Remember, whenever I say build, it means render. So we're going to actually render something onto the screen here. We're going to return a new scaffold. All right, now in our scaffold, we're going to say at bar Now we want a body. And this is what we were swapping out in our previous uh, tutorial here. Um, but this is the what we're doing today, routing and navigation, is the actual correct way to do it doesn't mean you can't swap out. Um, I mean, it works as designed. It just means this is probably the most efficient way, especially when you start getting into a lot of different things. And you'll see why here in just a bit. So we're going to say edge insets all. Let's say 32.0, just because I really like 32. And then child, new center. And this is a pretty typical design pattern here where you'll have a 
container for your padding and then you're going to center something and then you'll have a column and in the column you'll have a series of widgets and in this case our widgets are going to be a text box or I'm sorry a text field not text field just a text and a raise button all right so we have our on pressed and what we need to do here is we need to fill this in a little bit um, now this is the actual route and we're going to be working with the navigator so what we're going to say here is make our anonymous function navigator dot of because we want the context that we're currently in um, think of the context of it's like a context of a conversation if I say I'm going out but the context is I'm talking to my wife well that might not be too well but if I say I'm going out the context is to my friends then hey that might be a good thing so really the context is what context is the application currently looking at um, and it gets really deep but basically what it means is how is the application currently running what is currently on the screen and it gets really deep we're not there yet so just kind of you know drink the kool-aid and just agree for a moment so what we're doing here is we're saying when the raise button is pressed the navigator of the current context is going to push named now what that means is there's push and pop push means like you're going to push something onto a table you're going to push a a new screen out there pop means you're going to pull it away why is it called push and pop well those are actually you know legacy terms from the old C C++ days that have just kind of carried over into every language out there in existence so we also need our little semicolon there now push named this is the actual route uh, the route does not exist yet and we will build that here in a second but we're gonna have this on every single screen here so that is kind of the basic design pattern and I'm gonna actually start my virtual device here I'm gonna start a different device I'm gonna use the pixel XL shiny and new let that thing boot up all right so while that is booting up we are going to just copy that make a new file we'll call this second dot dart and we'll make yet another file third dot dart my phone made the weirdest noise I don't know what is up with this I need a whole new phone all right so second and we'll call this second this is the second screen and we want this to go to the third screen pretty simple I mean it's exactly the same now the third screen we're gonna do something a little bit different here we're going to paste that in spell third correctly is what we're gonna do and uh, let's see on this one going to actually just copy and paste this all right so on the third screen what we want to do is show how to go backwards uh, so let's say we want to go backwards in time and we actually didn't put any text in these did we well boogie fix these real quick while I'm in here thinking about it there we go and there's our raise button let's fix that in our second one too now let's actually just wipe both of these out and redo them 
All right, so back to where we were. We want this button to be the back button, not the back button. Jeez, back button. And instead of push name, we want to pop. Pop's just going to go backwards. Now this one we want to go back to the home screen. And this one gets a little bit different. And you'll see why here in just a second. Actually, let's just fix this up and run it real quick and then I'll show you exactly what's going on here. All right, so we're going to actually import a few things here. Import package All right, so we're going to import those screens. Now, in our routes, we need to actually flesh these routes out. And we do that using this syntax right here. Meaning, we're going to give it the route, say home. Build context, and we're going to give it the context. So basically what this is saying is when the home route is called slash home, and you can name this pretty much whatever you want. I just like using the slash slash home. Then it's going to create a new home under the current build context. That may not be a thousand percent accurate, but I think you get the, the gist of it. And then we're going to make our third. So we've got that. We've got our little emulator up and running with a whole ton of apps on there. Let's save this, give it a good build, push it out to the emulator, and see what happens. Now, the concept of a route is actually a little more involved, especially in other frameworks. Um, routes can get really kind of messy, um, and you end up tracking a lot of the stuff under the hood yourself. Uh, some frameworks don't even have the concept of a navigator, and you actually have to kind of build your own navigator class, which is a royal pain. This actually is pretty uh, pretty seamless, and I like it. Uh oh what is this? Home oh, yeah, we didn't set the home, that's why. All right, so hot reload should pick that up. There we go. So this is our home screen. If we hit next, you can see how it takes us to this is the second screen. And we have this little back arrow here, and we can click back, and it goes to the home. That's called, I think that's called intrinsic, intrinsic or internal navigation. I don't remember, but in part, that's the navigator class helping us out here. I think um, I could be dead wrong. That might be part of the app bar, but uh, let's just go with it. So, anyways, you can click next. It goes to second. You can click next again. It goes to third. Now, if I click back, it goes back to second. So I can go second, third back and forth, back and forth. Now, this time, if I want to go home, you see how there's home, but it has this little arrow up here, which takes us back to third. Well, let's say we want to get rid of that arrow. Then we need to do something a little bit different here. So what we need to do is let's go back into third. And instead of push named, what we're going to do is we're going to dot and this is a little, little bit of a long one. It's called push named and remove until. Wow, that's a long one. So what this bad boy does, ow, I just hit my funny bone and that was not funny. Gosh, and here I'm all worried about coughing and I'm like jacking up my elbow. <laughs> so here what we need to do is actually just say route and we want a dynamic. Let me see if I can push this over here a little bit. That way you can actually see what's going on. So 
So what we're doing here is we're saying the route of a type dynamic, which is actually a route variable, is false. So basically we're just going to keep going until we get to the home screen. So what this thing really does is it's going to push through that whole route list. It's going to say bang, bang, bang until it gets to home, and then it's just going to remove everything else. Hence the removed until. All right, so let's hot reload this. Actually, let's push it back out. Next, next, back works as expected. Home, bang, there's suddenly no arrow. So that is what the push named and removed until does, in case you ever need that functionality. And then it just works as expected. So that is routing, and that is how you would get around from, uh, I should say routing and navigation, that is how you would get around from one screen to the next. Now, some things to kind of pay attention to for design patterns is you'll notice that each screen is building an entire new app bar in itself. Um, that's kind of just the way I've done it. Um, and then what I do is I take the app bar and I put it into its own special class. That way, every single one of these uses the exact same app bar, and then the app bar is rebuilt every single time. Um, if you don't do that, one thing that I've noticed is you'll get double app bars, like you'll have home here and you'll have another blue bar underneath, underneath it. Um, so you kind of got to be careful about that. Um, this is just one of many ways to navigate around your application, but it's probably one of the simpler ones and I wanted to cover it first. Whew. So I have not coughed or sneezed the whole time. I'm very proud of that fact. Um, Give me some feedback in the video once I post it. Let me know if you guys like these or if you don't like them. Um, I'm really liking Flutter. I, it's just very fluid. Uh, it's, I worked with a couple other mobile frameworks, and I've got to just say, it just it, once you get over the Dart learning curve, it actually kind of thinks the way I want it to. Um, and I'm really impressed with, even in Alpha, just how easy this is to work with. I kind of can't wait to get into some more complex topics here. So... That's it for this tutorial. For the source code for this and all other tutorials, go out to my website, voidrealms.com. Click on GitHub, and it will take you right out to the tutorials. There's the Flutter tutorials. Uh, you can just clone all those down to your hard drive. And uh, feel free to join the Void Realms Facebook group. There's 1,700 and counting programmers out there, all walks of life. And this site is funded 100% by your donations. So if you've got an extra couple bucks laying around, pl please feel free to donate. Help keep this site up and running. That's it. Thank you for watching.